a lot of brouhaha, Mossy, over the last uh, few days here with uh, our U.S. Women's National Team captain, Lindsay Horan. Uh, you know her, you love her. Uh, I know her, I love her. Uh, however, she went and did an interview with The Athletic and, uh, you know, was, was spitting, spitting hot, hot takes. Lindsay Horan in The Athletic, quote, American soccer fans, most of them, aren't smart. They don't know the game. They don't understand. But it's getting better and better. She also said, I'm going to piss some people off. Well, so she's obviously knew what, what she was saying and the effect that it could have. She said, quote, but the game is growing in the U.S. People are more and more knowledgeable. But so much of the time, people take what the commentators say, right? Question mark. My mom does it. My mom says, Julie Foudy, um, wonderful, wonderful national team player from the past and a wonderful, wonderful broadcast over there at ESPN and other places. Uh, Julie Foudy, my mom says, Julie Foudy had such a good game. And I'm here just going, I was today. Okay, so much to unpack here. Uh, Lindsey Horan is a smart and strong young woman. And she's not even a young woman right now. She's just a woman, okay? Um, it's really interesting that these are the words that she chose to say. So not satisfied with already turning off many Americans who don't watch soccer. Evidently, the U.S. men's national team and the captain of the U.S., excuse me, women's national team and the captain of the U.S. women's national team has now set their sights on turning off many Americans who don't watch soccer. So that is a bold strategy. Uh, as I said before, I like Lindsey Horan. As a player and as a person, I want her on my team. I just happen to disagree with her low opinion of American soccer fans that she voiced in this article. But even if she truly believes what she is saying, it does seem like a very strange and needless shot to take at a time, as I said, when the U.S. Women's National Team is desperate to rehabilitate their image after the failure of last summer and the way that they have turned off people. Again, don't kill the messenger. And I fundamentally disagree with her premise here. And I actually think, and I've said this before, but I'll say it again. I actually think American soccer fans are arguably some of the most educated and interesting and well-rounded in the game of soccer. And that comes from the fact that, you know, we are in a country where, yes, soccer isn't king, but American soccer fans have often had to seek and discover that game. And whether it's the domestic game and all of our leagues that we have, or whether it's the international game that continues to go on around us and obviously is always used as a compare and contrast. And this proactive approach, out of necessity, has given American soccer fans this unique appreciation and this view of the game. And it's not provincial. It's worldly. We see beyond our borders. And American soccer fans are forced to see this game relative to that world and not just our country. And this means American soccer fans are more educated, I think, about the world that we live in relative to soccer than others. And also because of this unique American culture that we on this show celebrate and talk about, warts and all, American soccer fans are exposed to a wider spectrum of soccer styles and leagues and players and ideas and et cetera than all those other countries. And this has produced a soccer palette, if you will, for American soccer fans that I think is much more diverse than many soccer-centric countries and cultures. And when I think about my upbringing, for example, Mossy, I think about all the different influences that I had. And I played for uh, British coaches, and Hispanic coaches, and Iranian coaches, and it, the list goes on and on and on. All these different styles and all of different ways of thinking about the game. And as I said, back in the day, we had to really work to find our soccer, passing VHS tapes and doing all these different things. But I, what I think is that it's created this unique American soccer culture and this unique American soccer fan that, like I said, is incredibly intelligent. And so, no, Lindsay, I don't agree with you. 
I love the fact that you are honest. And as I've said with so many, including your teammate, Megan Rapino, I will fight to my dying breath to protect your freedom to say these things. But that doesn't come without consequence. And if and when I hear you say something like you did here in this article that I think is wrong and I disagree with it, I think I can rebut it. And I think that I can do it in a civil and respectful manner. And I think I can point out the problems and the way this is going to be interpreted, whether that was your intent or not. As I said, Lindsay Aran, she's a big girl. She can handle criticism, uh, whether it's about what she does on the field or what she says off of the field. And that's part of this incredible country that we, uh, that we live in. I just think that it was you know, a little misguided for her to do that. And if I'm an American fan and I hear that, and she wasn't misquoted, and of course, I read the entire article because sometimes it's clickbait. And if you have a problem with the headline, then go talk to Meg and the folks over there at The Athletic. But if you are going to say these things, and if I'm a soccer fan out there that spends money, that spends time, that gives of myself and my heart, and I hear, in essence, the captain of the U.S. women's national team crapping on me and others, eh, that's going to rub me the wrong way. And I think about what Lindsay Rand might have meant out there. And this is what it comes down to, Mossy, and I'll finish it here. We've all been around people that have gone overseas. And it should be uh, stated that Lindsay Rand has played over in France. And the experience that you get oftentimes can change you. Oftentimes, and we've seen them before, people come back and they're affected. And whether it's an extreme, like, I don't know, Madonna's British accent or something like that. Or if you've ever, ever seen the commercial uh, that's out right now where <laughs> the woman goes over to France and she comes back and she says, it's actually pronounced croissant. This is what's happening here, I think, with Lindsay Ram is she's seen what it's like and lived it playing overseas and playing in another country and the way that country and culture talks about and embraces the game and believes that that makes everybody else at home rubes. That that makes everybody else at home not know what they're talking about when it comes to soccer. And I could not disagree more. She is that affected American who now is looking down her nose at the very culture and the very landscape that not only gave her the opportunities to go and play in France or in the World Cups and stuff like that, but has worked their ass off each and every day. And I think that she, in this article, is selling them short. And I will, as the kids say, stand for the American soccer fan because, I, as I said, I believe they are worth it and I believe they have done the work. And I will put them up against any fan base in any country and any culture around the world. And I think what you will find is they're not homogenous. I think that you will find that they know much more and have a much greater spectrum of knowledge when it comes to the game than so many others. And again, out of necessity, out of the reality of living in a country and culture in the United States where soccer isn't king. I agree with you in general, and especially so on the women's side. If Christian Pulisic had made these comments, again, I wouldn't agree with it, but I could see why on the men's side, you would sort of look down on American soccer fans and maybe think that those in Europe understand the game more. But boy, for a, a U.S. women's player to make this comment is bizarre to me because I think uh, the United States has the most knowledgeable, passionate women's soccer fans in the world. W would you not agree? Yeah, I, I think so. <laughs> I mean, I, I think there is a yeah, the, the cultures of women's soccer and certainly the history and the success that we have. And, you know, we put a lot of money into it. And again, this isn't, this isn't about like, I'm not taking to the streets. This is about canceling <laughs> or anything like that. I love that she said something interesting. I want people to say something interesting, whether I agree with them or not. But in this case, I just, I, I don't agree. And I don't understand why this was necessary to say. In, the, in this moment. And if Christian Pulisic, 
had said, had said the exact same thing, I would disagree with him. But Christian Pulisic hasn't said something like that. And Lindsay can disagree with me and get in line because I say things all the time that people disagree with. And some have very valid and fair points in terms of their criticism of the things that I say. This is ultimately a belief and an opinion that Lindsay has and that I have and that they are contrary. That's just, you know, that's, that's okay. That's a good thing. But if you are going to go and talk to a big publication like this and it comes out and they're using click, clickbaity type of uh, quotes and stuff like that, you know, it, it, it comes with the territory. And again, this is, a, this is a woman who's been around a while and she, is, she understands how the media works, maybe more so than many players out there. And she understands how her words are going to be interpreted or maybe misinterpreted and how the media is going to use what she says out there to get clicks, uh, to get people to read what, uh, what's going on, which is what media does in general. And there's nothing, there's nothing wrong with that. You like that clip? Well, my State of the Union podcast drops twice a week right here on my very own YouTube page. The only way to stay up to date is to hit that subscribe button down below. Size the day and see you soon.